Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is 2004's Transformers Energon. Galvatron. Now Galvatron here is a repaint of Transformers Energon Megatron. And that's what Hasbro did in the early 2000s. They took a Wave 1 Megatron figure and repainted it into a Galvatron by Wave 3. They did it in R.I.D., Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. But Energon is the one that absolutely took the cake thanks to the G1 Galvatron paint scheme. And for us old G1ers seeing this, it was awesome. I mean, in 2004, that was the 20th anniversary of the Transformers anyway, and seeing this in those awesome G1 Galvatron collars just blew us away, and this guy flew off the shelves. Now, unfortunately, my original Energon Galvatron was sold off during my Transformers purge of 2011, where pretty much 80% of my collection was gone. But thanks to going to Shardicon in 2013, my interest peaked, and now I've got what I've got today. Now, this figure here is one of the ones I really regretted selling because this is a fantastic toy, and I was determined to find one again. And with all the new interest in Galvatron, thanks to Kingdom, I started looking and found this guy on eBay. Uh, he was available for a make and offer price. I made one, the seller accepted. And what was really amazing was the seller was from Utah. I bought this on a Monday and he was in my possession by Wednesday. So a huge shout out to eBayer Dealey W. Man, thank you so much. This is a great figure. And I highly recommend you guys check him out. He's got some great deals on some other Transformer figures. And I'm going to put a link to his eBay store in the description of this video. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at this long-awaited reuniting of Energon Galvatron. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> In vehicle mode, Galvatron is this gigantic Cybertronian warship with a tank on his back. And man, this thing is impressive. I love the looks of this vehicle. But first things first, let's take a look at this tank, which is an extra accessory that attaches via these pegs. You got four pegs on top of Galvatron and four holes right here on the tank. So let's move the ship out of the way and take a closer look at the tank drone. Galvatron's tank drone is a pretty neat little accessory. It has great molded detail throughout the vehicle. It looks great. Unfortunately, there is no rotation with the turret whatsoever, but it does have wheels. There's some modern Transformer figures that don't even have wheels anymore. Paint applications, he's got some purple paint here on this side, and translucent plastic here on this side, and this little targeting system, rectangle or whatever, that can flip up. So that's pretty cool. Now, this little tank drone is an homage 
to Armada Megatron. If you take a look right here, the similarities are spot on. You've got the little Decepticon logo right there. Same as here. You've got the molded in doors, just like uh, Armada Galvatron. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty cool. And the reason they've done this is the Galvatron figure and the Megatron figure before him was the upgraded version of Armada Megatron. The tank drone also features a pretty cool gimmick. You hit this little trigger right here, and he launches a missile. Yes, and has some quite annoying, loud sound effects. So this button right here, push that back. Lights and sounds. And what's funny is he launches a missile. I mean, this is a cannon, and he's opening fire. He fires off a big shell, and those are machine gun sound effects. But still, pretty cool little accessory for Galvatron. Now, let's take a look at Galvatron himself. As I said earlier, Galvatron's warship mode is very impressive. This thing reminds me of a Klingon bird of prey, and I love it. It is big, it's got a nice wingspan, lots of great molded detail and paint application throughout. This is a beautiful figure. Starting off right here, we've got translucent cockpit. We've got some molded in weapons, big translucent orange cannons here on the side, more molded detail up here up top, along with some red paint, translucent details here and here and underneath the wings. Check out the detail here on top, lots of nice circuitry detail, and the paint just looks fantastic. I love the Decepticon logos right here. They're actually molded in and painted. Of course, turn the vehicle around. Uh, you got nice intakes or outtakes, jet engines, my gosh, <laughs> Ugh, tongue tied. And look at the paint applications in those. This thing looks awesome. Now you turn him around, you do see a little bit of folded up robot, but still, this thing just looks awesome. And it has a gimmick. You actually pull these little translucent orange pieces out and the wings unfold to like a combat mode or attack mode, if you will. And that looks wild. Of course, you can fold them back down and attach Galvatron's tank drone. And then he can open fire with the tank and you get to hear those awesome sound effects once again. Galvatron's vehicle mode also has landing gear, which you don't see often on many modern figures as well. Landing gear folds up there in the front and here on the back. And there you go. I don't have enough good things to say about Galvatron's warship mode. This thing just looks amazing and I love it. Now that we're done showing off the warship mode, let's go ahead and get Galvatron transformed into robot mode. If you've not done already, go ahead and fold the landing gear back in. And now what you're going to do is fold these wings up and then rotate this whole back section a 180. So it looks like that. Now go underneath the figure and just bring these legs down. There's a little bit of an auto transforming gimmick as the legs are coming down. You're going to slide the landing gear forward, which will extend the feet and pop the knee out. So there is one leg, same thing over here. Extend this, the feet pop out, the knees pop out, and now you can stand the figure up. Now you're gonna grab these shoulders and just pull the arms down. Take the nose cone section here, you're gonna flip this back. This will fold along his back. It's got a double hinge. Bring the wings up. You've got Galvatron's head right here. Fold that back and flip the horns up. And there you have Galvatron in robot mode. Now, as you can see, Galvatron is a pretty big figure. I cannot get him all in frame, mainly because of his weapons that are up over his shoulder, but you can actually rotate these forward like so. So there you go. You can also take the wings, fold those back slightly, not that far, but right about there, which gives him a pretty decent look. I actually like to have mine with the cannons at a slight angle like so. Galvatron in robot mode looks 
amazing. Once again, fantastic sculpting, great paint applications. Look at the face sculpt. This guy is awesome looking, and I just can't get over the paint applications, the red eyes, the purple Decepticon logo, the red abs here, the orange, the purple, the reds. It just works. This guy is awesome. Now, as far as articulation is concerned, the head is on a swivel. It can do a complete 360. The arms can rotate as well on a nice ratchet. Now, they can't do a 360 because of the wings on his back. There is an elbow bend forward and backwards. I'm not sure why it has a backwards elbow bend, but once again, great ratchet. No wrist rotation, but there is a forearm rotation, though it is very tight. The legs can go up, they can go back, and of course they bend that way for transformation. No regular knee bend and no ankle tilt. But still, a great figure for one that came out in 2004. To utilize the tank drone with Galvatron, take the tank and flip these little panels out right here underneath. You can get your thumbnail in. So you've got these two panels that flip out. They've got little tabs that will enable you to clip this to Galvatron's arm like so. So now he's wielding the tank as a fusion cannon. And of course you can launch the rocket and utilize those sound effects as well. But if you look, it makes him a little lopsided. Now another cool thing that Galvatron has, if you take the tank off his arm, shush, and here on his back, you see this little section right here, plug the tank in. Man, that's noisy. So you got the tank plugged in, you're gonna depress this button right here, and you can pull out a sword. Now, get the little tabs back out. You can clip the tank on Galvatron in reverse. They didn't pop back in so easy. So now Galvatron is wielding a sword. And it's got a neat effect too when it hits something. It lights up and makes that sound. But it only works that way. If you hit it this way, nothing happens. But if he chops downward, there you go. So that is really cool. Now I do wish that the sword accessory, if you didn't plug it into the tank, at least had a peg to fit in Galvatron's fists. Both fists have a five millimeter hole, but neither the sword or any of his other weapons will fit in his fist. So one big letdown there and the fact he is so wobbly now on his right side. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers Energon Galvatron with Generation 1 Galvatron, Armada Megatron, and Titan's Return Galvatron. 2004's Transformers Energon Galvatron is a great figure. This guy is a ton of fun. He's got a great vehicle mode, a great robot mode, pretty cool accessories with the tank that can launch missiles and the sound effects and the sword. This guy is just awesome. Plus, you can't go wrong with those Generation 1 paint applications. Now, one thing I did notice during my comparisons is Galvatron also has 5 millimeter ports here on the wings. So if you have a Battlemaster in vehicle mode, you can attach some Battlemasters to Galvatron to really beef him up. So there you go, guys. 2004's Transformers Energon Galvatron. So, does a 2004 Transformers Energon Galvatron belong in your collection? Absolutely. This is a fantastic figure. I absolutely love this guy. So much better than the Megatron mold he was actually repainted from. Because, face it, this mold is Galvatron. And Hasbro nailed it with this collar scheme. He's got a great vehicle mode, great robot mode, firing missiles, a hidden sword, and not to mention all those Generation 1 throwbacks. I am so happy to have this guy back in my collection. I was just ecstatic to open that box again. And yeah, if you see this guy, don't hesitate. Pick him up. You are not going to be disappointed. Just be mindful of the missile and sword that he's supposed to come with. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. 
Also, a couple of shout outs. Deluxe Baldwin is now a channel member here on YouTube. And my newest Patreon, Sean. Guys, thank you so much. And once again, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah!